I think the general consensus is that these indie worlds are a letdown, and there was no Hollow Knight Silk song, so it's even worse of a letdown, and there wasn't any Zelda Mario Donkey Kong Nintendo has no new games, so it's even more of a letdown. But I want to push back against that and let you know that Nintendo doesn't have a problem. We have a problem. So, good morning Mario and good morning Switch fans. Got the water because it's later in the day. I woke up for the live stream. You can check my live reactions to the indie world if you want on the channel. I went back to sleep. I'm back here now bringing you a thoughts and reactions, post reactions, and uh, just some general thoughts and review and, and just the state of Nintendo right now. Now, I also want to let you know that the Japanese indie world had some more games, different titles. One, the Exit 8 that's out today for $3.99. Probably the best stealth drop of the day, so I want to point that out that you kind of got to look around when these indie worlds happen, that other countries get extra games. I mentioned it on the stream, but the Exit 8, a very cool walking sim, but creepy. Like, I think it's really good for $4. It's a fun game on Steam, but Steam is why this was so great. Steam World, a new Steam World game. And yes, it's not Zelda. Yes, it's not Mario. Yes, it's not Donkey Kong, and it surely isn't Metroid Prime, but guys and girls and everybody else, what were you thinking? I can't believe that time and time again, when we have these indie worlds, we got people saying like, where are the Nintendo games? Where are the big titles? Where are the big releases? This is what Nintendo has for the rest of the year? These are the games they're putting out? I don't know how many times we have to say this. I don't know how many indie worlds we have to go through, but like, these are the indie games. This has no bearing and no... It's completely separate from anything Nintendo First Party. It's completely separate from whatever they release for the rest of the year, and by golly, they will. They just haven't announced it yet. They will have games. They have games coming out in May and June, and they will have more games coming out in the second half. We just don't know what they are. So like I said at the top, the problem is with us, eager, anticipatory, and wanting to know. And Nintendo's like, dude, we're fine. We're making tons of money. We do have big releases. We got a Mario and Luigi coming out as the next two titles. We got an Endless Ocean for something more niche and quirky. We got a bunch of indies, and then we'll announce the rest of our stuff when we're ready. But honestly, there were 10 games in this showcase that I really liked, and 7 of them that are insta buys. and I think that this goes down as one of the best indie worlds ever. Let me know if you agree or disagree or think I'm crazy in the comments down below. What's going on, everybody? Late title card, it's Zach from Switch Force, and we correctly predicted this indie world, but we did not correctly predict Hollow Knight Silk Song. So it seems like Hollow Knight Silk Song is either tied to a Nintendo Direct or tied to Xbox and Summer Games Fest this summer. It's a bigger deal than an indie world, and that's fine and fair. With the recent ratings boards listings popping up, there was some hope and some dream that it could come out today because we didn't know what Nintendo would really show off. Besides Little Kitty Big City, which I'm pissed didn't drop today. I was ready to play that. I think it looks very cute and fun. Untitled Goose Game vibes, Stray vibes, but it's not out today. But they did announce a bunch of other cool things, and you can poo-poo indie games as much as you want, but some of the best fun I have every year is with indie games. And I think until you open the door for yourself to experience things that are not Nintendo first party, you will never get the most you can out of your Switch. Do I look more forward to the big first party games from Nintendo, the next Mario, the next Metroid, the next Zelda? I sure do. I think we all do. But that doesn't mean that there's these other titles along the way that can't be fun. And SteamWorld Heist 2 looks phenomenal. Going from outer space to nautical is such a great, like, 180 flip. A lot of games are like, we're in the sea, and now we're in space because it's future. But these robots are going back in time with better graphics, more customization, and really, really cool looking gameplay. I hold true that the SteamWorld franchise is the one of the best, if not the best, indie franchises on the market. And by franchise, I mean a, a whole universe, right? SteamWorld spawns many different games, many different genres, and it spans across SteamWorld Heist, SteamWorld Dig, SteamWorld Quest, SteamWorld Build now. Like, there's a lot in the SteamWorld universe, and it's so fun to see it continuing. Nobody knew about SteamWorld Heist 2. This hadn't been announced before. It's a big surprise drop. Well, it's a surprise announcement, and then the drop is in August, which is a bit far away, but hey, four months passes quicker than you think. I'm super stoked for this. Is this the next Mario? No, but will this game be as good as many of the $60 Switch games you've played? Yes. That sounds crazy. It might not be as long, although SteamWorld Heist had plenty of content. I think this one is going to be one of the best games on Switch this year. You just got to give it a chance. And I know that, like, side-scrollers and 2D art games, like, you get bored after a while. I think Animal Well looks really cool. You may not. I think Little Kitty Big City looks cool. You may not. I think Valley Peaks with the frog tongue, like, putting those tongues on all sorts of things, for some reason, that seems really cool. The graphical art style, I like it. 
The TMNT game I've heard good things about. I instantly dismissed it when I heard it was mobile, but it's an Apple Arcade exclusive that they specifically sought out to have on iOS, and now it's coming to Switch, and people that have played it have said it's really good. So a TMNT roguelite after the success of Shredder's Revenge? I'm in. And I really want to see Anton Blast. The idea of running through a stage Wario Land style and then having to backtrack through the stage as it blows up. Super cool concept, super cool art style. Not out till November, which is a bit of a bummer. But all of this, like, this was very cool. There are so many good games, and I think that it gets built up because we're waiting. And so here's where I guess I will say that Nintendo does have a problem. And the Nintendo problem is that by setting this established routine for us, that we have a direct in February, we have a direct in June, we have a direct in September, we know the game's coming out, and we don't get many third parties, we are eager for information like it's the last droplet of water on a hot day. And we want that info and we want to know the games. And all you need to do, Nintendo, is give us some calendar touchstones and we would be satiated. And indie world events like this could be much bigger. Nintendo is hamstringing the indie worlds by not announcing first party titles so that the indie worlds get so much more hype and unnecessary pressure. Nintendo never themselves says like, oh, these are going to have big games. Watch out for, you might see your favorite plumber. They don't say that. But players assume that, and players are so hungry for knowledge from Nintendo that they put unfair expectations on things like the Indie World or even the third party showcase or other Twitter posts, announcements, things of that sort. Because Nintendo does not have many third parties announcing new games for the Switch, nothing really big and bold on that front, it's up to them. And so I think more than any other company, they need to have a more elongated announcement calendar. They need to give us more on the horizon because it's the only stuff we're really looking forward to. My like, guess there'll be a port here or there, an old game coming back with a new version. There'll be indies, but in terms of the big games, the reason you buy the system, the reason you have a Switch, it's Nintendo and it's Nintendo and it's, it's just Nintendo. So I think they should have a longer leash on what they reveal. And I think this year has been really messed up primarily because of that internal Switch 2 delay. And I think they should have audibled faster. I think they should have gotten on top of things quicker so that indie worlds were not facing pressure and all of the problems that an indie world like this faced because to me this is an a indie world this is a fantastic indie world where i'm like dude i'm playing duck detective the secret salami i'm playing another crab's treasure i'm playing animal well i'm playing shim where you jump from shadow to shadow is another weird frog i'm playing bzzt. i might not be playing stitch i'm probably not playing cat coast 3 i'll check out tmnt splintered fate okay europa looks really sick that guy's movement looks incredible and i've heard the demo is awesome on steam Lorelei and the Laser Eyes looks like Hotel Dusk meets a modern mystery meets a crazy TV show. Sign me the heck up. That one's out May 16th. Valley Peaks, The Frogs, sure. Anton Blast, absolutely. Sticky Business, great concept. Maybe too cozy for me. Refined Self, I thought was the only dud of the day. It just doesn't appeal to me. Yars Rising also looked a bit slow. But WayForward is a great developer, so maybe. And I think Little Kitty Big City looks fun, even though we already knew about that. I think this is a really strong indie world and it is a great supplement but without the main course like the salad feels far more bland you know what i'm saying i think that makes sense for just about everybody and it's our issue that we're viewing this in such a weird way we're putting pressure upon it we're expecting things that aren't going to be there we're not taking it for what it is we're not giving indie games a chance we're not trusting that nintendo will have announcements later in the year but it's also nintendo's issue i guess i'm realizing as we discuss this together that they really are the ones that are negatively impacting their own presentations by not putting forth a calendar. People have been telling Nintendo this the entire Switch generation, like we like to know, we anticipate the directs, but in some ways I think Nintendo feeds off of this and the hype and anticipation for new games allows them to stretch things and sell things more than maybe they would. Like when we don't have anything announced and then they're like, guess what? Twilight Princess and Wind Waker guys. You're like, oh my God, that's it. We gotta put our money towards that because Nintendo, this might, this might be all they have. This is this is all they have announced in the, the first six months of the year. Go, go, go. And then we get excited for it, right? There haven't been any new, for well, Endless Ocean Luminous, but outside of that, no major first party announcements this year. So when they do drop one, it's like Nintendo knows they can be greedy. It's like they know if they announce Metroid Prime 4, like everybody's going to pre-order Metroid Prime 4 because we need a freaking video game on Switch. But I still think it would be better for the fans and better for the overall Switch state of mind the mental health of all switch owners to give us a longer calendar because they don't have the third party support because we're so reliant on just them and 
I'll toss it up to it being a weird year, but I feel like in the Furukawa era, they have gone to much shorter hype cycles, which in some ways is good. Like you find out about Mario Wonder in June, it's out in October. Boom, baby. You find about Paper Mario at the last direct of the year, it's out in the first half of the year. A lot of times in the past, that wasn't the case with Nintendo and other publishers and platform holders, but it's become much more of routine for Nintendo to have shortened hype cycles. The problem is it always leaves us wanting and wondering what's next. And especially towards the end of a console generation, we're really waiting for the next big thing. We don't have a Tears of the Kingdom touchstone to rely on and put all our hype towards as we wait for it to eventually come out. We have a Metroid Prime 4, but nobody knows what that game is. We've seen nothing of it but the logo and an apology. If there was some big game, a Mario Kart, a Mario, a Smash Brothers, a Metroid Prime, a Donkey Kong, something out there that we could latch onto, I think it makes the wait easier. So then you can get away with not having as many announcements because you have one Kahuna announcement. But if we're not going to have that, we need multiple little announcements. And I think Nintendo's whole schedule is very thrown off by the Switch 2 delay, by Pokemon not releasing till Q1 of next year. It leaves us with, like, traditionally in February, we would have got a direct with announcements. Didn't get it. Traditionally, at Pokemon Presents, Pokemon Day, we would have got announcements for this year. Didn't get it. So we're left scrambling. We're left hunting. We're left hungering for a new game. And so I understand putting extra pressure on any world, but, like, there was never going to be a humongous game there. We could hope for Hollow Knight, and I do think that also contributed to today's disappointment. Like, no Hollow Knight does stink, but that game is coming eventually. We've already waited four years five years. We can wait a few more months. It will be out soon. It will be out this year. That ratings board does not indicate a year delay. It's going to come out, but I think the hope is something big from Nintendo. We haven't heard from Nintendo in so long. You know, if you if you track it back to September when they did announce Luigi's Mansion 2 and Paper Mario the Thousand Year Deer, we're going to nine months, and I guess that is problematic. So while we shouldn't put undue expectations on indie worlds, Nintendo should do better by us. Going on nine months without announcements if we go all the way to a June Direct is pretty sucky. And so, you know, while I think this indie world was a strong 9 out of 10, I think Nintendo's communication right now is a strong 2 out of 10. And even if it's because of an internal delay, it can't be that hard to shift some announcements around and get it going. And if we're to believe that that delay took place in February, they've had like 75 days to make it better. And thus far, they haven't. Here's hoping that a direct pops up soon, but my better judgment indicates that there won't be a new direct until June which means more of this waiting, more of this yearning, more of Nintendo dragging things out. And I think it just creates a bad ecosystem, not just for us fans who are hoping for games, but for indie world titles too. When Animal Well comes out or when Valley Peaks comes out or when any of these titles come out, we're not gonna be as excited if we were if we knew like, okay, our main course is out there. This is just a fun gap filler. Instead, it's like, okay, this is all we got. And then again, that pressure starts to build and the importance starts to build. And we're looking at Anton Blast and saying, this is the November game. No, it's not. It's not. There will be a big Nintendo November game. Some first party release from Nintendo will drop this November. We just, unfortunately, have to wait for it. But I did thoroughly enjoy today's Indie World. I'd love to know what game you like best from it. For me, SteamWorld Heist 2, hands down. Looks incredible. But let me know your take in the comments down below. And until next time, everybody, thanks so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay happy, stay positive out there. Love you lots. Switch Force. Out.